Okay, good morning, Jeff. It's the AM show on Three Magic Talk and online. It is uh, nine minutes away from eight o'clock. Lovely to have you company this morning. Our next guest uh, was a self-confessed maths and science. Um, well, it's not phobia. I was going to say dropout, but no, no, I was the dropout on, on science and maths. But after becoming frustrated that her lack of knowledge in this area were holding her back, she basically rewired her brain and trained it how to learn those sorts of subjects. Her work in this field has been called revolutionary, and she's helped over two million people learn how to tackle um, tough subjects through her popular online course, Learning How to Learn. Uh, powerful mental tools to help you master tough subjects. Engineering professor, so failed a mess and failed and failed a mess and goes on to become an engineering professor. How does that work? Barbara Oakley joins us now. G'day Barbara, good morning. Good morning. Um, I find maths almost impossible to to learn. It's like a mental block. Do you think you could teach me maths? Do you think you could teach me the tools? Absolutely. How? Absolutely. How? Well, we need a little time. Yes. <laughs> but part of it is we first start looking at something and we it, it, it takes our time our brain a little time to figure things out so we often when we're first focusing on something we think oh well I, I didn't get it right now so I can't get it period but that's not true at all if you focus then take a break and let your brain consolidate the information then come back and kind of keep working, it can make an enormous difference. So you slow down and start and let your memory work. Yes, um, and so, and that's a good way to put it because your memory is, you're consolidating, you're actually yes. building the structure of your learning. It's, it's analogous to building strong muscles when you're working out. How much of our brain do we use? Well, you can't really, I mean, we use all our brain all mm. the time, so it's hard to quantify like that. But uh, we're often put off from learning things that we really can learn, and a big reason for that is procrastination. Yes. <laughs> well, that, well, that's a, that's a, that's a, a great human trait. Well, why did you fail at maths? What was, what was wrong with you when you were young in terms of your maths ability? I... I, I just didn't like it. I didn't have a knack for it. Yes. And so when it came to the multiplication tables, I just thought, well, I, I, I can't learn this. And the class was moving rapidly ahead of me. That's a good point, that when they move rapidly and you can't get back, you fall further behind. And that happens in our schools. Oh, yes. And I think some of the new uh, technology that will come out that allows students to practice more on their own and make it fun, kind of gamify mm. with practicing with things like multiplication tables and gaining what is called procedural fluency. In, in, in other words, this sort of, oh, I know this, this automaticity <clears throat> that's somewhat similar to being able to back up a car without thinking about it. Mm. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Oh, no, you can. <laughs> in fact, one of the interesting things is uh, for older individuals, they've found that video games, action style video games can help bring your attentional abilities back to what you were like when you were in your 20s. Right, so, and, so element of fun is crucial or game or competition. Uh, uh, all of those things, yes, and they can really help. What I found interesting when I was reading about you last night is your online courses are among the most popular in the world. And I know uh, universities have spent millions on setting up their on uh, online courses, but I read you put your studio together with equipment that cost about five grand and you figured out how to buy all this by Googling how to set up a green st screen studio and studio lightning. Is that all part of your learning process and how tough <laughs> was that in the early days? Um, it was pretty tough. I mean, I think one of the things that you do as you're doing this kind of well anything is you become more comfortable with feeling uncomfortable so when you're learning something new you often feel like oh I, I can't do this uh, but you you just kind of keep powering through but one thing that surprised me was I was invited to speak at Harvard and I was a nervous wreck because I mean it's Harvard and uh, then when I, I went in there I was even more surprised because the room was packed. It was standing room only. And it turns out that the, uh, a, a big reason behind this was that our one little course made for less than $5,000, mostly in my basement with my husband and I working together, actually had on the order of the same number of students as all of Harvard's online courses put together made for millions of dollars with hundreds of people. And this just tells you that people are starving for fresh, scientifically grounded approaches to learning. This is crucial to, to, to a new economy. Yeah, and it sounds like your system works when it comes to learning uh, skills like math and science and the likes and, and, and motor skills as well. What about sort of emotions and behaviours? Many people say to me, I need to learn compassion and empathy. 
empathy. And I've struggled to deal with and learn those. Can you actually learn behavioural traits? <laughs> oh, uh, yes, you can. But it can sometimes be harder because those are sort of hardwired in at a very deep level. Part of my, my other research involves pathologies of altruism. So in other words, good intentions that can have sometimes problematic results. So, uh, so I, I do think compassion is such an important thing to learn, but we must be wary because sometimes our compassion can dupe us into doing things that are actually harmful for the people we most want to help. Could you teach an old stuff how to dance? Uh, uh, well, I couldn't because I can't dance very right. well. But it, you could always learn. I could always learn, <laughs> and I'd love to. You just described the Labour Party in that one <laughs> sentence. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah, he's got a thing with the Labour Party. He's, he wants to have a dance with them. Um, I appreciate your time on the program. Oh, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. You've yeah. inspired me to um, to be better. Yeah, to be better. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate your time.